to Face to Face, and today we're going to talk about music, we're going to talk about youth, we're going to talk about the big project involving a uh, lot of very young musicians, talented musicians together. And I'm with Nilko, and welcome to Face to Face. So tell us, what, what is this project? I went to see the show, it was fantastic. How many students did, were there? Thank you, David, for the invitation. Uh, yeah, this year we managed to bring around 80 young musicians from different countries of Latin America. Yeah. So it was from Mexico, it was from Venezuela, it was people from... Yes, we we brought uh, kids uh, from... Uh, it's basically the same project that works in different countries. Mm -hmm. So we, this is the first time that we put them together and we're able to fly them into New York and to the and Washington to do a little tour yeah. of uh, this orchestra uh, that performs classical music. Mm -hmm. So the kids were coming from uh, Jujuy, north mm -hmm. of Argentina. Mm -hmm. They were coming from Chiapas, Mexico, yeah. Medellin, Colombia, Colombia, and Caracas, Venezuela. Yes. There were also some kids that came from Phoenix, Arizona. There was actually one young, talented violin player. From Florida, uh, no? And also Miami, yes, Miami. which is where the where the main uh, foundation works. So they were they are between like eight and. They were this time from eight to fifteen. To fifteen. So very young, talented. Mm, musicians that are that are finding ways of living their life through classical music and why why <laughs> no no because it's it's I'm, i went to see it it's absolutely breathtaking it's it's so powerful to see this this musician uh playing together and yeah. and 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 so what what is a uh... well basically um for many years, uh, it's known that uh, art and, and, and especially music and the way an orchestra functions, mm -hmm. it's a very good way of teaching uh, people at a young age how to work in, in a, in, in, as a team, in yeah. a, to create a better society yeah. and to work better as a, as a team. So, because in the orchestra, in classical music, Everybody plays a very important yeah. role. Nobody and, and, is more and, important than exactly, anybody. Yeah. It's, like, it's like a soccer team, yeah, you know? Yeah. If you don't have the goalkeeper, then... Yeah. So everybody, even if you don't make the goals mm -hmm. on the other team, but you need to be there because mm -hmm. otherwise to your protect. team doesn't yeah. work. Yeah. So the orchestra functions in that same way. So when you're part of the orchestra, mm -hmm. you, you really feel that you belong to a, to a place where you can contribute and you, where you're actually needed. So you, if you don't come to the rehearsal, if you don't come to the concert, then the orchestra misses you and everything collapses. Yeah. So I think when you're, when you're a young person and you have that feeling that you are actually required or needed in a society, oh, this is very powerful images. you yeah. find yeah. Uh, a place in society. Yeah. So that's a concept that, that, that we have known for years. Mm -hmm. I mean, we mean humans, like we mm -hmm. know that this helps to promote a better society. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, there was a great, great, great uh, visionary man whose name was Antonio Abreu. Mm -hmm. He was born in Venezuela. Yeah. And over 40 years ago, mm -hmm. He started teaching kids that belong to very uh, poor, communities. poor communities, so people that really need some help in, in order Caracas. to develop a better society. So he was basically just going to these random places in the middle of nowhere, and he, uh, and he started to teach classical music for free to these kids that had no other opportunity than to go into the street mm -hmm. and live a life that is not the most positive for them, yeah, following yeah. the steps of their older brothers and sisters, yeah. Com very uh, difficult family situations mm -hmm. where some of these kids were completely yeah. homeless yeah. or they don't have anything yeah. else to do. Yeah. And then, of course, the next step is just to, to do something that's illegal. Mm -hmm. And then there is a, there's a lot of conflicts that come with that. We yeah. all know that. Yeah. Yeah. So Maestro Abreu was giving them an opportunity, like, oh, instead of, mm -hmm. why don't you come to this mm -hmm. so that you can learn how to play violin or mm -hmm. how to play mm -hmm. the flute? Mm -hmm. and. Some of, the, of these kids loved the idea and they were coming regularly to these classes. So Maestro Abreu started gathering other friends of his and they would go to teach these kids. So this was over 40 years ago. Time passed and this project started to be known and they were, there were a lot of people as volunteers. They were going to uh, give their time and teaching and recruiting more of these kids all over Venezuela. This was in the suburbs of Caracas. Yeah. So, little by little, the program expanded. 
Okay. And they started adopting it in other societies, in other neighborhoods, because the kids were actually falling in love with, mm -hmm. with learning music mm -hmm. and creating orchestras. And the parents were, I'm sure, because I saw the parents, they are even more involved yeah. than the kids themselves. I mean, they yes. so, play a big, big part of it. So when everybody knew about the project, then yeah. the project became a little more uh, known, mm -hmm. and up to the point that many years ago, the project became part of the constitution in Venezuela. So it's a constitutional project where the government had to give funds for this project. Oh, wow. So it is spread all over Venezuela, and then, of course, a lot of talented people started to came out of there. So yeah. after 10 years of working, these kids that were eight, now they were 18, Gene, and they and were they professional were like... violin players, professional flute players. Because if you're a kid... Oh, this is very interesting. When, when you're a kid and, and, and somebody tells you, listen, this, is, this flute is for you, this is yours. And this kid, he doesn't have food at home. Yeah, yeah. Suddenly he has a flute, so yeah. he has two options. To, uh, do I sell this flute and make exactly. some money? Yeah. Or maybe then, I just now, they need me in this orchestra. Without me, this doesn't work so this kid that was no one suddenly has a responsibility in, in, in this yeah. little society that we call the orchestra so as a social experiment it worked wonderfully because they wanted to be part of this so um, one of these kids many years ago was so talented that he went out of Venezuela and toured the world as a conductor as a young conductor and he was basically uh, impressing all, all uh, people around the world because mm -hmm. he came and won very important competitions, mm -hmm. conducting competitions in Europe, in Germany, and then uh, everybody was asking, like, where is this kid coming from? Why, why is he so talented? Yeah. Because usually in this, let's let's say, elite world of classical yeah. music, everybody knows each other. Yeah. And we know where they are coming from. I yeah, mean, and then like, so some kids are born to be great. Like yeah, if you are, yeah. yeah, if you if you if your parents are musicians, then you, then most probably you're gonna be a great musician, and mm -hmm. they nurture you and they take care of you for so that you can be the next Karajan, the next exactly. uh, great yeah. conductor. Yeah. So suddenly, this young mm -hmm. kid from Venezuela mm -hmm. comes and starts conducting better than anybody else. Mm -hmm. So his name was is Gustavo Dudamel. Mm -hmm. So Gustavo came out of the Sistema, that's mm -hmm. how it's called, mm -hmm. of orchestras in Venezuela. Mm -hmm. And then after that, he called international attention because great masters like uh, Claudio Abado mm -hmm. or Simon Rattle from mm -hmm. the Berlin Philharmonic, and mm -hmm. uh, Placido Domingo, they all look into Venezuela and they flew and they started seeing the wonderful things that Maestro Oreo have been done for wow. years. So after that, the whole world was like, yeah. Focusing on focus the, on what they yeah. were doing and applying it mm -hmm. in different countries mm -hmm. up, to, up to the point that they came to the New England Conservatory mm -hmm. in Boston area mm -hmm. and they founded a school in, in partnership with the conservatory of how to teach El Sistema. Mm -hmm. So if, you have a, if you're a musician and you have a master's degree in music, mm -hmm. you can apply and if you're accepted, you study for two years, I think, and then you learn how El Sistema works. Mm -hmm. So young students from all over the world, mm -hmm. Spain, Europe, mm -hmm. I mean, they, they, were, they, could, they were coming here and mm -hmm. after they get the degree, mm -hmm. they go to Venezuela, they experience how it works and mm -hmm. then they, they, they go away and create their own wow. systems. So that was how um, some of these um, uh, groups were born in this area. Mm -hmm. So there is a, a group in Washington Heights, mm -hmm. uh, another one in Union City. So what they do is they mm -hmm. teach music mm -hmm. where, uh, where it's more needed. Mm -hmm. So and that's... How, how did you get involved? Okay, so... Because you, you come from the traditional Colombian music. Yes, yes. I. And just to finish, uh, yeah. Gustavo Dudamel is today the actual, uh, the principal conductor of Los Angeles Philharmonic. And he oh, has wow. a huge career. He's doing amazing things. Wow. So he's been in, in, an inspiration for, uh -huh. for us, for yeah, many yeah, musicians. Yeah, yeah. So the, how I ended up um, into this is because in uh, 2010, we did a concert at Carnegie Hall. It was a, a, a production, a mm -hmm. professional production where we try to portray uh, composers from Latin America. Mm -hmm. So basically we would uh, play music from the past that mm -hmm. was not known mm -hmm. from different composers from uh, Brazil, Mexico, yeah. Colombia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, also we were commissioning young conductors from Latin America to write a piece so that we could premiere the, mm -hmm. the series. And the mm -hmm. series was called Amazonas. Mm -hmm. 
So this was really good. Everybody loves the idea. And every year we have been doing that. Mm -hmm. But in 2011, I was invited to perform in Brazil. Professional concert with a professional orchestra. I played the Villa Lobos guitar concerto. And then they invited me to, to, to teach at this uh, group, social group, inspired on El Sistema from Venezuela. But they were in Brazil. So I went there and I met the kids and I was really amazed with their talent. They were really talented. Mm -hmm. So I told to the directors, hey, they are so good. This is incredible. These young kids play so well. It will be great if we could bring them to New York to perform at Carnegie. And I said that as a big dream because I, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. No, you know? No. It's like producing. <laughs> But it was like, it would have been nice. It would be nice if they could come, that's what I said. But then the directors took it seriously. Yeah, and know. they started <laughs> moving everything. And then, the big mouth. this was 2011. And then they, they found all the money they needed with the Brazilian government and with money from their parents of the kids. Everybody was collaborating. The kids were playing music on the street. So how did you have to make reservation at Carnegie and then you... you so in 2011, we ended up, actually, we managed to do it. We, we got the fundings, we got the visas, the permission, the hotels, transportation, the flights, and we did everything. And we brought uh, a hundred piece orchestra and, we, and I started doing contacts here so that we could present them in many different theaters. And we did a concert at the United Palace Cathedral we did a concert at St. Peter's Church in Midtown. This is crazy. Union City Music Project. Just a logistic of yeah, that story. It was, it it, was, it's a nightmare. It was crazy. I learned. We learned a lot from it, and 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 it was beautiful too. So it was it was very yeah. rewarding when you see their kids. They couldn't believe they were playing at Carnegie Hall when you're 12. That really changes your life. And to prove the point, when they went back to Brazil, the government gave them a house and they were received as heroes, and they gave them instruments, and they gave them everything they didn't have, just because they managed to do this. So it really changed their lives, and that project has been growing, and uh, hopefully it'll happen again. So since that moment, I discovered that there was something beautiful in doing that kind of social work. So inspired by El Sistema from Maestro Abreu, I have been getting in touch with different uh, projects that do the same thing in different countries. So in 2015, I worked with um, um, Redes USA, which is a program that was born in Tijuana, Mexico, which is also the same thing, mm -hmm. teaching kids, and mm -hmm. then the most talented, they get to travel. So we produce that. Of course, since 2011, I had to open a production company and do all the infrastructure that I didn't have. I had no idea. I mean, I can't. I know how to play the guitar, but I, I don't know how to produce. So that was that's but been a huge how, learning. Story. Because you, you amaze me all the time. Because you are a fantastic musician, but you always are ready to collaborate to very social project. I mean, it's and it's it's where where this come from? What what? I, I don't know. I guess I guess coming from a from a country and the, when I was growing up in Bogota, Colombia, it was a it, it wasn't a really beautiful moment. I mean, it was it was a tough moment of uh, of uh, violence and there was a lot of uh, things happening. I was as a kid, I went to the corner to buy milk and there was a bomb that exploded two blocks wow. away from me. So it was like they were not nice moments. The 80s, the 90s in Colombia were not a, a good problem. We had a lot of problems, yeah. a lot of corruption from mm -hmm. the government, but we also had the guerrillas, and then we yeah. also have the, the drug yeah. cartels. Yeah. So I, maybe maybe there is something that... that, that yeah, but I know a lot of Colombians. Believe me, I know a lot of... My <laughs> wife is Colombian. <laughs> I wish it were... Everybody was, I wish it was a trick, but it's not the trick. It's, that's I, not I, what. I don't know, but I, I just know that without knowing, I ended up doing it in, mm -hmm. in Brazil, and then I fell in love mm -hmm. seeing the reaction of the kids and seeing how understanding what Maestro Abreu teach all of us, which is how to make a better society using the arts for that. So no, I no, think it's, I it's very No, no, I understand the result. I'm, the, the, the story is the beginning. The problem is not too much at the end. The problem is at the how because it's it's a yeah. crazy project. It's a crazy, crazy. I guess project. I guess it's just a, if uh, I received a lot also from yeah. great teachers in the past. Yeah. You know, I was also helped by my teachers here and to see and to read what Maestro Reo did. Mm -hmm. So then I feel mm -hmm. I think that every artist must have a mm -hmm. social responsibility because otherwise 
art loses its value. If you are making art so that you can be famous or make money, or like, and that, that's that's one way. But I think it's way more rewarding. And I think since the very beginning, art causes and it has a strong force to to make impact in people's souls and, and make you react in a different way. If you, sometimes you are in front of a painting and then you start crying and you don't know why. And so art is a powerful tool. So mm -hmm. if we if we use that tool towards building a better society, I think it's it's just something that we that we should take into consideration. And if we have that possibility as artists, so I think we must have a social responsibility. I just think it's just basic. And I feel better when I do it. It's just I play better, I feel more connected. I yeah. uh, I feel like I'm no, just it's not beautiful. I think that's that's what's um, mm -hmm. maybe the cause of it, mm -hmm. and that's why in uh, with Susan Seaman, who's mm -hmm. this wonderful lady, who was actually one of the of the of the she was she has been in El Sistema in Venezuela since the very beginning. Mm -hmm. She was she closed hand to hand with Maestro Abreu, mm -hmm. and she is the one that's in charge of making sure that El Sistema works well in different countries. So. They don't have a direct relationship with El Sistema, but they do get inspired and they follow the mm. teachings of Maestro Abreu. So Susan is the one leading this project with the Simana Foundation. Mm -hmm. So she made sure that all these kids, she put them together and then we collaborated mm -hmm. so that we could bring them here. Mm -hmm. So the concert you, came, you went was the Susan Seaman Foundation and Aslo, which is the company that I run right. here. Mm -hmm. We produced this and then we brought the kids. Mm -hmm. I ended up conducting the orchestra. Every, there was a lot of guest conductors. Mm -hmm. It was a beautiful yeah. experience. Yeah, really yeah. And the kids are just super happy that they were mm -hmm. able to come and perform and here. So, and the parents were. Do you want to go back to Colombia and give us a little bit? Now, what is the situation there? How, well, do you, how do you see? Uh, I see that there's a lot of uh, hope and things are, are way better like than when I was growing up. Of course, there's a long way to go mm -hmm. um, because I remember um, uh, one person once said that he was fixing the country because uh, he was fighting against terrorism and he was fighting war with war. And, uh, and for some, some people were very happy that that was happening. And then he said, yeah, now, now in Colombia, we're better because now it's easy for you. You can go in your car to your countryside house. Now it's, it's safe. Now everybody can do it before you couldn't do it. So now you feel safe if you take your car and you go to your countryside house. And I was like, okay, that's beautiful. So now the only thing that we need it's is to have a car, it's a countryside house. a car or a countryside house <laughs> because most of the country don't have that's access cool. to a countryside no, house a or a car. So it is a solution, but it's not. So I think that it's definitely better, but we have a long way to go. There's a lot of corruption. There's a lot of things happening. Yeah, but you have a, I mean, it's not like I like the new government, but I like the fact that you have the election, and the election include uh, people from the FARC and the people from the different communities. They start to get involved at the political level. Yeah. It's much more interesting than having them yeah, killing, I killing one another absolutely. with a gun. I mean, I remember. A lot of my friends 15 years ago, they say we cannot do anything in Colombia. Where for the last, you know, five or eight or nine years, people are going back, they're going vacation, they come back. I have my, in my own family, I have my cousin who went there to do else uh, from France. She flew, or a Japanese friend who went to uh, Colombia to do eye surgery. Yeah. So it's very different country. And yeah, right now it's different. And I think it took us a long way to arrive to this point where people could be included. And now you have people from the guerrillas being part of the decisions. And then if, it's great because you want, now you have a, a, a normal way of supporting or not supporting, but at least there's an option and there's no more people um, uh, fighting. However, right now things have might have changed yeah. because right now, for example, there was, I think, 150 yeah. million uh, that are invested into the arts and three billion that are invested into the war. Oh yeah. Right, that, that just happened, like last week. It's so it's, it's so it's you, have, you have this percentage for the arts, and then you had this huge that is invested in war. Yeah. So where are we going now? Yeah. That is a, it's a very big question. But that's a question all over the world. So far we have been good. And then no one's asking this question. Yeah. That's another show. 
But <laughs> no, no, but it's definitely, no, it's yeah. a big issue. It's yeah. a big issue. Here in the US, it's the same story. The poverty, the, the level of uh, disparity between the rich and the poor. I mean, it's, it's the, the military uh, here, it's crazy. So. Absolutely. So I think. One contributes, we contributes to what one can. Yeah. And I think my mission or what I can do is to play and to yeah. make sure other people play music. Yeah. And I have seen myself how music is a transformative power. So that's my weapon and it's been so far no, no, so but good. Thank you because you are not just playing music, you are doing much more than this and it's so wonderful. <laughs> thank you, David. Thank well, you very much for... That's what's, so that's the story, that's the story with the program, okay. with what we did, what you saw. Do you have anything to plug, any, you want to invite people to something, a yeah, website uh, to uh, Yeah, absolutely, at? just please, uh, to learn about these concerts and to learn about all these projects, just go to neilcoandreas.com okay. and I try to post everything there, everything okay. that has to to do with the social projects or my own concerts, okay. where um, where I'm also performing. There's a big concert coming up November 21st at Carnegie. Okay. It's a professional concert, so it's, a, it's not going to be social, mm -hmm. but uh, still a good cause. <laughs> and, yeah. and yeah, please just check that and, and keep in touch. Okay. That was the show for today, and uh, uh, please keep watching your news on Presenta.com, and hope to see you very soon. Thank you very much.